I'm back and I'm sunburnt and I'm in New Zealand. Metfin at the moment, first man I'm visiting is Nagel Contracting, a County Clare man who's out here now with his own setup. He's given me this ute to drive, which is much appreciated. I'm hoping to get to the North Island as well in a couple of weeks for the maze, so stay tuned for that content. So, we'll get into it. You're going to be the talk of County Clare now for about a month after this I will, yeah. <laughs> I won't hear the end of it anyway. <laughs> what's, what's your excuse anyway? Probably camera came out sure and tried to drive it on. And, and you're only picking up all top ones as well? Yeah, top <laughs> went down this part, it got heavy. <laughs> They'll be all at home now, like, how did he block it and that stuff at all? It's just nothing in that. He says I he can't never, wait to see the comments now. He says he never blocks. <laughs> the walk of shame. <laughs> Today is not a great advertisement for uh, no, not heavy really. crops in New Zealand or anything not, like that. Not for heavy crops, no. It's coming towards <laughs> the end of it now, so it's not ideal really, but sure you can't time everything. Yeah, you are saying like you, you do do heavy crops sometimes. Uh, we do, yeah. There is a good few farms there that we do beef. Um, we do for the winter beef and like it's all about quantity more than quality but a lot of these dairy farms it's all about getting the right dry matter and the right me and then how long are you with pa this is my second season with him i the first year he set up in 1920 i went with him and uh i went with him and i only started off in a rake i was only doing a bit of round bailing at home and things like that there with a local contractor but um Sort of as things progress there, sort of he'd show you on anything there if you were interested, to be fair, and he'd teach you and learn you, he'd be good that way. Yeah, so you're from County Clare, back home, the same as Pat? Yeah, right beside him nearly, he lives in this canner, I'd be from Anne Shryman, only uh, five minutes over the road, really, in a car. Um, yeah. But Pat has been here with 11 years, he's a long stint done, he only travels home every now and then. Did you know Pat from home, though? Yeah, I did, he would have oh, been yeah, about yeah. two years ahead of me in school, yeah. so he's done a lot better than I have, anyway. <laughs> yeah, we're all thinking that. Yeah, we, yeah. We discovered yesterday there was only, I think, four days between me and Pat, he's four days older than me. All right. So, yeah, he's done a lot better than the two of us now, which Yeah, no, he has, but sure, we're <laughs> just as happy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah he just yeah. stressed a lot of the time there, and he just have an old puss on him, maybe. <laughs> all right, but sure, when things go quiet, he isn't worse. Oh. Stones, stones and metal here. Yeah, you're getting fair hardship today with a... Uh... Metal and stones, yeah, we usually have a wagon away to us. Um, Morgan there usually drives it, but the gearbox went in it there a few weeks ago. And we usually send it around with um, all that, the two harvesters to uh, pick the metal and stones so the harvesters don't have to. We can just spit it out and then he just comes and collects it. He, oh, might, even, yeah, yeah. he might even pick headlands there if they're, if it's very stony. And you find that a good job, like? Ah, uh, it is, yeah. It spares the knives. Now, to be fair, the 9 series don't really throw the knives as much as... Uh, 8 series and we run a half set of knives here, 24 knife drums, so we run 12 knives instead. Yeah. Um, it just, you get the same chop line quality because it's a very old drive header, um, so as you go faster she speeds up and all that. Yeah, so this machine's fairly top of the range now, Barry, you don't have autofill. Autofill, I'd say it's the only thing, um, it has auto roll there and a heavy roll it'll follow it around corners. Um, I was sort of against it at the start of the season, but it's handy for topping off loads. You yeah. just push the button there and the camera in the front there will follow the roll and you can just top them off nicely. But um, Harry takes the fun out of it sometimes. And <laughs> the odd time then you can be going around the water truck and it could veer off for the tractor. You'd want to be you'd want to be fairly on it at times. Yeah, you wouldn't be going for a snooze or anything like that? No, no, no. <laughs> maybe a long row, maybe a long row. <laughs> And, uh, like, are the choppers going nearly all year round here? Um, pa Paz, not even just Paz, as a contractor, but I'd say nearly each out, each contractor nearly have one main chopper if they were doing a lot of chopping. Like, w this chopper is usually out every week. Um, I think it was out nearly every month chopping last year because they had a weird season. Yeah, he was saying they chopped 11 months 11 last months, year. yeah. Now, that wouldn't really be the norm, but, um, that wouldn't really be normal, but uh, it's just the way the season worked out that they were able to do it. Um, uh, it does go after a lot of chopping now, it would be sort of his bread and butter, um, work-wise, but he does a good bit of silage square bale, and they put them in tubes here, something that a lot of lads at home wouldn't have seen, up along by the edge of the fences, and wrap them all in a big sausage for the long and short of it. They'll wrap round and square, like with two Yeah, round, round and yeah. square, this one machine will do both. 
it's a Mon Eight prided fleet, I'm told. Yeah, it is. It's a fairly good machine. Uh, it's it's well, I don't know. Can you say that? But I don't know. Anyway, she's tuned up there, anyways, and she's had a few bits done to her. She's actually nearly putting out the same horsepower at the PTO as the 724s that are in the shed. Um, just a small, tiny little bit smaller frame on it, which is a, a, a lovely machine. Now, in fairness to, um, he's he's had no bother with all the defence he's had, really, to be honest. Rice go there now for us. <laughs> He'd be alright. No, there's been a. He's had no bother really with the fence now, to be fair, even the transmissions ran like that. They've been fairly bulletproof, a bit of answering. Bryce? Do you need carbon to cover the stack? Do I need carbon to cover the stack? Um, I don't know, because Pat told me to leave the lads covering the stack and go out bailing. I need a right, and I have no. Yeah, you'd nearly want to ring Pat about that. Right, I'm going to install the mine right across. Yeah, well, you don't really know, Bryce, so I have to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'd say give Pat a ring there, sure, and see what happens. Alright. Uh, yeah, what? Pressure on for me? Ah, uh, sort of. Straw season is just about to start. And, uh, it's actually alright because grass is dying down. We had the uh, two choppers out there for a bulk of January. Um, it's now it's end of, end of January. That other chopper will be just kept sort of as a spare um, in case it breaks down. It might, it probably won't have to go out now anymore. But it's grand when the pressure comes on to have a spare machine. You nearly always want a spare chopper if you're doing a good amount of chopping. And how did you kind of end up out here then? Were you were you were in America first or then? I was I was here first when Nagel started. I just got on to him when um, I was finishing one summer. I said, I, I might like to travel. I sort of hadn't really left home before that. Yeah. And we just went to Nagel for his four season, got on good there. Went back home and never really had the intention of leaving again. Then I went over to KB in America, um, a fairly big silage operation, probably one of the biggest in America, and got driving a chopper out there through a lad, Ryan O'Leary. And uh, from then on, I was sort of over in America, and I said, instead of going home for the winter, I said, instead of going home for the winter, sure, I'm halfway. I'm halfway near to New Zealand if I keep going the other way around the world. Pat said he needed a lad to come and drive the chopper, so I said I would do that, yeah. So instead of going home for the winter, I just did that. It was grand. So you were here the first year, you were raking. Yeah. No, no interest in the chopper. No interest in the chopper, no interest in any machine, really, Barry. He had a fusion, that was all I knew was round bales. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's all they'd have up around us. <laughs> but, uh, Sure, Neil, the lad who used to drive this any time I was done wrecking the field, I used to just sit up there where you were with him, just talking. Yeah. And only having the crack, and sure, he was forcing me to fill a few loads, sure, and I flat out refused, but sure, I gradually started filling a few loads, and he showed me a few bits. And sure, next thing, when I went to KB and said I had a bit of experience on one, no, I wouldn't have drove it long at all when I was here, but Ryan had no problem throwing, throwing lads up in 990s if he could trust them. Sure, he did a, did a fair good season there. And, once you had a month by one, anyone would be able to, anyone can drive them like they're handy out. It's probably when something goes wrong and the maintenance and stuff is where the tricky stuff is, I suppose. Yeah, they're not too hard at all, like, but like it, we'd be able to change our own knives and shear bars and service them ourselves. Bar wiring, like, we'd be able to do a lot of the work ourselves, throw in the KPs ourselves for maze and everything, like. Yeah. Which, none of that stuff's hard, it's just you. You just want to have done, you need to have done it before. Yeah, like you can mess it up, like throwing in a set of knives, like you'd sort of want to have at least seen it done, like... <laughs> yeah. uh, they're simple enough set up in these knives here, it's feeder house open, so you could have the feeder house open in five minutes, it's easy, from having the header on to having the feeder house open. In an 800 series, it doesn't swing open, does it? Uh, I don't believe so, no, I think uh, you take it off, either on the header, or there's a frame that comes with it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd have never so. drove an 800 series, but the knives then, if they hit a stone, they can step back and you have to reset them. But um, I wouldn't have really dealt with them now. The 9 series seems like fairly, a fairly good machine. And when you came out here then, like, did it kind of pass, help you out with like accommodation or? Yeah, I landed, the, I landed there, he had accommodation and organized for us. Um, he'd help you with the visa and everything. Like I'd say a lot of contractors, like anywhere you go, if you just message them or they'll have a HR or someone in HR, no pad in at that time, he was only sharpening off. He was, he was HR himself. Yeah. But, um, like they'll help you through the visas and sort of help you try and organise flights like um, through your first year it's a very easy visa to get, it's 
one year working holiday visa. So when you can get that and they'll hand it out to anyone. It's sort of the second year when you need to get sponsored by somebody. It's a bit trickier, like? Yeah, the first year visa you can work for 10 lads if you want. But the second year visa, there sort of has to be a job advertised. No one has been able to fill the job. And it sort of has to be specialised, sort of, and immigration will give you the visa then, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there, there's way more, like you could have the visa, you could apply for the first year visa in five minutes at home on your phone and you'll have it within three days then. You, you'll have a reply if it's during the week. A mate of mine that came over here from America with me had it within three days, like in America when he applied it. Mine took about a month, maybe even two months of to and fro and references. Because he was going for the first year and he was going for the second yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. second year. They even went to the medical and everything to be performed and stuff like that. It was a bit awkward. I think that's the way most places in Australia and here. And what's the plan now once uh, things are quieting down here? Are you going to stay on or are you going to head back to America Either or home? Or? I'd say I'd, I'd be very tempted to go back to America for a season. It's a nice lifestyle. Um, it's great. It, it's a broad country. It's great to see America in around Texas and the likes of that. I'd recommend anyone do either this or that at least once anyway. Because it's just great to get away for a year anyway. And, and the seasons kind of line up nicely. It definitely, really, like, it definitely does for New Zealand. It's complete. It's complete opposite. Um, just as everything is finishing up at home, silage-wise, or for contractors, like definitely grass. When grass is finishing there, it's only starting here. And October onwards, like they're flat out into grass here. And then you come around to the back end of uh, the back end here, and you're you could go to America because they start off in kind of first of May. Yeah. They'd be, they'd be looking to have lads over there maybe even from the middle of April onwards. Yeah, middle of April is when they went over last season. That was yeah. a bit of a drought year, but um, they were at wheat, and that's sort of when wheat season starts. And even in between wheat and maize in America, you could probably go home to Ireland for a month and do silage again if you wanted, because there's a small bit of a lull, a lull in between wheat and maize. Yeah. And alfalfa is sort of all that's on, but that can vary. You could be waiting. You could be waiting. Um, You'll be waiting a few weeks in between a cut of Lucerne. And would you go back to KB again? I would, yeah. I got on well with them anyways. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I actually never heard of them until I went to um, Monks in Australia and a few lads there had been working for them and they were saying they're actually a massive outfit but they just wouldn't be big on the social media maybe. like. Um, yeah, that's it. Like, I, nobody ever heard of them and I told them back home that I was born with KB and they're like, who are they? Everyone thinks of Robinsons or PMS and nothing against them, they're grand, but these lads are, are a massive size, like they have 40, they have about 40 harvesters and most of them 990s and 200 of their own silage trucks. Um, a great experience, they, like as long as the lad is keen, he'll get up in a big machine, no problem there, they don't, they don't care about much experience as long as you're interested like you'll get shown anything over there and that lad you were saying ryan uh o'leary is it yeah ryan is, is he an irish lad that's managing there or something or yeah that? he's been with him about five or seven years and he's sort of crew leading over there or managing the a harvest manager but if any irish lad wants to get on he's sort of lad that does the recruiting um i only messaged him through facebook through a friend of mine that i had heard of him and he had absolutely every bit of information for the visa there and he'd have no bother if he was in America or Ireland. If you missed him, you'd have a reply within 12 hours nearly. Like he helped out with the visas, with the visa for America now. You would get it as long as you go through the rigmarole, grant, but there's a lot of paperwork. There's right. a lot of paperwork and a lot of stuff on the computer. My head was hard to fry trying to do it, but your man has a sort of a document there and it'll run through it one by one that he can just send you a link to and he shows you everything, how to do it for KV or for that H2A visa, as it's called, Agricultural Immigrant Worker Visa. Yeah, so that's a great help to a lad like that. Yeah. Wouldn't have done, might have done a visa before or whatever, like, or... And if you do the full season, they have to pay for your, the H2A visa, they have to pay for your flights. You don't have to pay any tax on any income over there. And they're supposed to give you a meal every evening. Or and free accommodation. Yeah. yeah. So it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's actually good it works out well like if you get good hours you'll make good money over there. You've no you've no costs as such like. No, nothing. Only you need more to go down there then. Ah, uh, Queen will bring glass with their shoe. Hello. The only thing you probably have to buy up there is a few pints. 
few pints, yeah. <laughs> a few boxes of beer. And a few steaks. The yeah. roadhouses were nice now there. Now would there be many Irish there now at the likes of KB or Robinson? I'd say, I'd say it can't be alone. There was a group of, not one of us went over together. But I'd say there was a group of about 25 of us. 20 to 25 of us. And like none of us even knew each other going there. A lot of us just went out on our own. We had some crack there now to be fair. There'd be a few bits wrecked over there as well now to be honest. <laughs> there'd, be a, there'd be a few mishaps but in a crew that massive you would expect it now. Yeah, the crew yeah. is massive. They have over 200 Mexicans in their own silage trucks drawn in. We wouldn't have a word of Spanish. <laughs> they wouldn't have a word of English. <laughs> I don't know who that is now, that's either Steve and the low under there playing Castle Down on Gate Army. They're all out to get me now. <laughs> Oh, we better leave it at that now or they'll be sagging you. Yeah, that's it now. You would know what come out over that radio now. <laughs> you know you're here. All right. So look, we'll see you later on anyway. Lovely. It's so, okay. <laughs>I don't know, I suppose I started contracting and machinery when I was about 11 or 12 back home with my uncle and a guy that sold second-hand machinery and uh, love for machinery started there and started working for a contractor then when I was 16, bailing and mowing and all that crack and decided then once we finished school that we'd uh, do a trip out here to New Zealand. It was only, only meant to be six months but uh, did the six months, went home, I was like oh well, couldn't settle at home, went away again been here 11 years now and uh, yeah gone from strength to strength yeah yeah so yeah i was working for a contractor here for seven years and myself mark nikki catherine decided to give this a go four years ago and yeah i've just gone from strength to strength if you said four years ago where we'd be today i probably would have said you're dreaming but uh yeah i got a lot of lot of support like farmers and clients and stuff very supportive of what we're doing and um yeah came behind us and yeah so here we are so the man you worked for before you went out on your own, like you were the manager there, you kind of yeah. ran the show. Yeah, so I was, I was managing that for about five years and then we decided that we'd uh, do something for ourselves and uh, bit the bullet and yeah, kicked it all off. And you started off then, did a lot of them customers kind of stick with you? Yeah, yeah, so a lot of customers that um, built a lot of relation, good relationship with and stuff that came our way and we just progressed from there. We just started to get more business and people were talking and we went from strength to strength year after year and here we are today. Yeah, what did you start off with? Like, did you go out and you buy chopper first or buy tractors um, first? So we started off with the 950 that's there, the 494. Uh, so we had one chopper with one set of mowers, bought the 724 Freddy that was new and a new set of mowers, new rake and then a couple of tractors, with five, or five tractors in total. And uh, yeah, one square baler and a round baler. And there's a few more, few more here today. Today, what's here? Is there 11 or 12 tractors? There's 11 tractors. There's a new Holland we hired in, so it's five fins, five Johnnies in a case. There's three squares, there's one round, there's two choppers and uh, three sets of mowers, a couple of tube wrappers. So yeah, definitely, definitely added to the fleet quite substantially from when we started. What's next, do you think? I suppose just keep doing what we're doing, doing it well. We're building a new yard at the moment. Hope to be in there for the coming season. A um, few bits of gear just coming and changing. New rigs for next year. Just probably looking at the idea of maybe another tractor or two. Just so you're half and half Fent and John Deere, but it's more Fent for the bigger stuff and John Deere for the smaller stuff really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So anything over 200 horsepower is, uh, is Fent and anything under 200 horsepower is John Deere at the moment. Just they seem to do their job quite well and find them very reliable, both brands. Just, there is a bit of a price difference, but for yeah. the jobs that we're doing, for the mowing and baling, the fins are phenomenal. The smaller tractors are in and the Johnnies for baling, round baling, or carton bales, rake and tedden. They're just a good, strong, sturdy, comfortable tractor. So I think we've got a good mix. We, we have introduced a case. Uh, very happy with it. Yeah. So we'll just see how it goes, yeah. And then you had the 300 Optum case out on demo when you got the new baler too. What do you think of that? Yeah, no, that's a very, very nice piece of kit. We're very, very impressed with it now, to be fair. It was quite, um, quite taken away. 
comparing it to our 828s it's it's a good tractor a bit cheaper too a bit cheaper yeah no that's that's another thing that we've got to factor into things now machinery out here is just getting getting ridiculous the same at home price just increase after increase uh you yeah, start looking at other uh, things out here is is just crazy expensive anyway like it's yeah you're talking 30 40 percent dearer out here than at home for the exact same machine yeah look we've we've been fighting that for years like you can buy a tractor in ireland or the uk or just anything a bale or a chopper but we, we seem to be paying a premium out here uh, but it's it's everyone you know it's yeah, not yeah. just us and it doesn't matter what kind of dealer you go to they're all pretty power on pair and any any gear you have at the minute did you import any of that yourself i know you import the mde Book yeah, rates. so we're doing that for a while, and uh, we imported a square baler. What was that? Two years ago, we traded that in that 436, our first one. That was just over. That was Christmas 21. Um, so yeah, we imported that. We imported a bit of parts and tires and stuff like that. And with the way the price of things are going, we probably will look at doing a bit more. It just depends, you know. You want backup, you want reliability. So that's why you get warranty, and you can buy extended warranties now, but. You're paying a hefty price, you know, if you're paying 50, 60, 70,000 more than what you could lend something here for, is that warranty justifiable? Yeah, well, I've heard from two contractors in New Zealand that are running fusions that you're basically paying 40 grand of a premium on a new fusion out here. And just, yeah. just for the backup, you're getting really low. Well, that's it, yeah. So, you know, and they're a good machine and reliable. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people know a lot about them without having to go to a dealer to, to get them going. So, yeah, we, we do look highly into that as well. Um, it's something that we're looking more and more into. But um, so you're not running a fusion at the minute. No, not at the minute. No, I get a lot of stick for that. We, we started with a fusion. West of Ireland man not running a fusion. <laughs> That's a disgrace. We we were running a fusion too, and it was an awesome baler. Very good. It like, gave us little to no trouble, and um, just the bail count was getting high, and wanted to make a move, and I decided to go inline. Um, it's been good. Like it's, it does its job, does it well, makes a good bail and stuff like that. But we will, we will head back towards the fusion. At the time when we went in line, we were putting more bales through the tube wrapper. So yeah. it was like 70% were tube wrapped and then 30% were individual. So I was like, there's no point. We we'll, might as well get the, get the in line, unhook the wrapper and you're not putting the bales in it. And you get two balers out of a wrapper. But well, I had to eat my words because the next year they were probably doing ninety percent individuals and the rest of them through the or ten percent through the tube wrapper. So we will we will look at um we will look at a fusion again, yeah. Yeah, like you're in line, like you said, it's great if you're doing if you don't need the wrapper a lot. Yeah, correct. But yeah. it is fairly slow. Yeah, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as fast with transfer and stuff like that. And I suppose it takes a while to get used to, you know, making sure that you're in line and stuff like that. Yeah. The guys here are good, but yeah, you, you get a better output out of a fusion. Yeah, what do you think of the Fent baler now? Very happy with it. Yeah. yeah, very happy with it. Makes a good bail, being reliable. Everything has their issues, you know, not in major. Um, the service is very good. Um, yeah, I've been very, very happy with it. Very happy with it. So that's a belt baler. If you were going for a fusion now, would you be going for a belt fusion or a fixed no, chamber? No, I'd go back to, go back to fixed chamber. Yeah. So if we're looking at a fusion, it'd be a fusion four plus probably that's what we'd be aiming towards next year. And is year. there any issues tube wrapping with the, the fixed chamber bales? No, it's fine. No, 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 no. That's what we were doing before with the Fusion 2. There's no issues. It's, it was more or less um, the biggest thing that I was taking into account was, you know, you're putting all the bales through the baler and the wrapper and it's all depreciated as one unit. Whereas a lot of the, our first year was going through the tube wrapper. So I was trying to minimize on that um, depreciation that we'd get two individual balers out of the, the, the one wrapper. But now that you're making loads and loads of money, you're not as bothered by the appreciation. <laughs> well, when you send me over something like you were saying, um, we should be all right. <laughs> uh, another thing you had out on demo while I was here was a new John Deere combi baler. Yes. What did you think of that? That was very, very, very impressive. Very, was very impressed with that now, to be fair. Um, there's not many of them here. So yeah. that's always kind of a bit of a worry in some regards of backup, knowledge on them, parts, stuff like that. But it was a... Uh, Made an unbelievable bail, great intake, was quick, so that was an impressive machine. So you liked it, but you wouldn't buy one? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. No, I, I, think, I, think we'll, I think we'll stick with uh, what we know and what's, what's out there that's good, so I think we will stick with going back to a Fusion. And probably will keep that Fint baler as well. But yeah, I think we'll, we'll look at adding a Fusion in the next coming, maybe, maybe not for next season, but maybe the season after.
We'll head but back. in your other green line stuff, your mowers are all class. Yeah. They weren't when I got here, no, you no, had a set of Cameron's. No, no, no we, we, we did try a different, a different brand, but um, we didn't get on very well. Uh, just had a couple of issues too many times, but like we... The Cameron's we got, were just too soft for the Irish boys, was it? Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> so now we, we've reverted back to class again, and look, class in the green line is very hard beat, especially for the conditions here as well. And um, they're just, they're proven over time. And that's why we've, we're back to three sets of class mowers now and we're class rakes, which has been really good. And forager, that's what we're running the class green line. We yeah. are going with the fin tethers. Uh, which like is to, a lily. Which is a lily, just yeah. unbelievable. Just with the hook time, reliability, sturdiness, operator, just, just an awesome piece of kit. So yeah, we were running a different brand when we started. We had two and we got out of them into these fin tethers and not looking back. So you're going to be sticking with your class mowers and rakes yeah. and with your fin tethers? Yeah, yeah. Class mowers, rakes, harvesters, like the GACB on the stack and the telehandlers and stuff, like very happy, reliable, doing their job well. Um, what else we got? We had the KS balers, like that was a big move for us a few years ago. Mm. I was a bit hesitant at the time. They're an expensive piece of kit, like. Yeah, they are, yeah. Looks nothing's cheap now these days, and yeah, that's yeah. what we're saying. It's They're they're not cheap, but um, very, very impressed with uh, especially the R&M costs on these. Your winter maintenance, just your running costs throughout the year is minimum. They're easily work on. They're operator friendly. You know, you can pretty much tell anyone how to do it over the phone and get them bailing. So no, they're, they've been an awesome piece of kit. So you're running one four three four and two four three sixes yeah. and they're all putting out four by threes. Yeah, yeah. So it's all four by three squares. Something that's big out here that you wouldn't see at home is square bales of silage. Well look that's that's a big thing in Canterbury. That's that's just this area. All right, like, yeah. You you go down south you would have seen there's fusions of individual round bales everywhere. Yeah. Thousands and same up north. It's just this area because we do we do a lot of straw. So like there's a big area for straw here and then I suppose people just started doing they had of, the square balers anyway, kind of. Yeah, correct. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So like we'd be we'd be kind of one to two in silage, and then the three balers in straw probably isn't even enough given the weather patterns that we're getting. You know the rains and that. But we've had a good run recently, which has kind of pushed us near the end. Thank God. So another thing the lads at home now might find surprising is you have two choppers, two loaders, you basically have two silage screws, but you've no silage shredder. No. It's all higher higher all, in trucks. So all our cartridge, most of our cartridge is hired in. So we have the wagon, and um, the wagon goes with the chopper pretty much everywhere. And that's just, you get some stony gateways around water troughs and stuff like that, that if it's stony, we'll just let the wagon in and it cleans it up and we chop into it. Just keep moving, same thing, a lot of metal detections. You just, you don't, you don't want that downtime. You've got trucks sitting there, chopper sitting there, you, you want to be moving. So the wagon just scoots in, picks it up, keep, keep moving. You know, just trying to be efficient. We don't, downtime just costs too much money these days. Um, but yeah, no, we, we haven't, we hire in a lot of our own trucks and, car no, sorry, a lot of outside trucks that cart all our, our, our bales and our, and our chopping in. We do have a couple of bale trailers, we, when we're quieter we do a bit ourselves and on wetter days we'll shift a few things around, but yeah, no, pretty much all outsourced. But that is very common here that you would be yeah. carting silage with trucks. Yeah, truck and trailers even, like the ground's good here, you know, even after a good dose of rain, you give it 48 hours and no trouble with trucks getting back on land. It's quite a um, free drain and soil. And is it easy enough to get the trucks the days you want them like, or is that a bit of an issue sometimes? Or? Oh, look, it all depends. Um, you know, some days you're trying to run as many crews as you can. You're trying to get two chopping crews and two bailing crews going and you can be limited you know, as it's a worldwide thing at the moment. Truck drivers are getting hard to find. Um, so they're experiencing that out here quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we can be limited some days and it all depends on some, some of the journeys that we're traveling you know we do a lot of traded grass of fine chopping bales so sometimes like we had up to 12 truck and trailers on a job this year it was 150k round trip so you know you're you're really planning ahead trying to get that one moving so silage is your bread and butter really yeah. in the business yeah. so we don't do any cultivation slurry anything we just we get a long season out here like we'll we can start here we'll start doing silage august september just the odd job and in october starts to crank into it. You're busy right through till now. Like, so I'll be busy as silage to January. Straw kind of takes over, you still do some silage and then you hit this time and straw tails off and still do silage through to mid end of March and then we're into May. So it's a long season from end of September till end of April. 
and you, you do your few bits in between. You're not just doing contracting, you're trading, buying and selling straw, yeah. grass, maize as well. Yeah. So yeah. you'll so buy, we'll say, straw on the ground. Yeah. You'll so, bail it, sell it on. Yeah, so like a lot of it over here is done by the kilo. So we'll buy grass with whatever, 25, 28 cents, and sell it on to a client. And so then we just do the job in between. Same as straw, we buy a lot of straw, and that's all traded as well. So off the farmers and combines, so I buy, I find the straw, and then I find the buyers. Same thing as maize, whole crop. It's quite a, quite a big thing out here. So everything is kind of by the kilo? Everything, yeah. And you have your own mobile waybridge then? Yeah, we've got two mobile waybridges now. And um, so yeah, they go, they go with the choppers or if they need to be dropped off to a bale or somewhere. Look, there's a lot of waybridges on farms here now. Yeah. You know, a lot of the cropping farms and in and out of other places, you're never that far away from a waybridge. But um, that's, that's the way it's gone out here. When I, when I started out here, it would have been by the bale and some of it by the kilo. But um, it's, it's all by the kilo now. Yeah, so even the straw now you're buying and selling, like, that's all by the kilo. Like. All by the kilo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's by the kilo. So yeah, George, some, some bits that we buy, like we buy a bit of winter quality, like rank or grass and stuff. Probably buy that by the bale. And then, That'd be lower quality. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just winter feed, just gut fill. And then um, anything, anything that's good quality is all by the kilo. Yeah, Everything. yeah. Well, yeah. Pat, that's probably, probably enough. I won't hold you up any longer. Lovely. Thanks very much for chatting. <laughs> no, thanks very much for calling over. <laughs> So Stephen, you're not making tea, what what do you be doing around the place? Oh sure, breaking stuff I suppose. <laughs> I thought you were meant to be a mechanic. I am, but sure, it keeps me busy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a head, you're head loader man really, are you? Oh, well yeah, I am I suppose. Shabari's oh, kind of retired to qualification, though. isn't he? You have to be head loader man when you're the only man at <laughs> <laughs> But you are a qualified mechanic as well? I am, yeah. Yeah, serving time with JCB in Dublin. Oh you're right man to have her out here so. Uh, the fairness are not bad, they haven't broke down all this year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, they're good old But if you do have any bother, you're, 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 you have to fix it yourself now. <laughs> uh, yeah, say nothing. <laughs> and they actually don't get in trouble because you get it fixed before he knows. Were well, you on the 434 then when you came first? Uh, no, I started on the 435. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. well, you only had the one shovel out anyway, so oh, it worked yeah. out well. I got in the 435 straight away. 434 is only a backup, really? Like. That's it, yeah, yeah. Just a bit of the second chopper out to bring out the 434 as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did see you stacking bales with it, all right? Yeah, that was a bit rough now. You've got me on a bad day there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, look, you're stacking up better than mine anyway. We're not too bad that way. get that in camera, though. Oh, no, no, thank God. <laughs> not on Phil. <laughs> good, good thing. Where are you from back home? Uh, from Balladrine. Just uh, in our scamming there. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't be really pit silage country now. All right, all bales. Oh, be all bales, yeah. <laughs> you get about a week of good weather and that's it. So you'd never drove a loader before you came out here? No, it's never. Only ever around the air in ECI, that was about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's a big change. I wouldn't have done that much contact at home really either, like. Probably would have been part of the reason why I came out, was to get more experience at it. Give it a go, like? Yeah, that's yeah, it, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's savage, like, you get on anything here, if you're willing to do it, like. And you going home soon then, or? Yeah, so I haven't really booked any flights yet, but I'd say we'll probably go around in the, in the May, I'd say. Things will be quiet enough around then. You want to stay for the maze, like? Yeah, we'll get the maze out of it and head on. Right, sure, look, I might catch up when we get back to Ireland, anyway. That loops, so we'll have a point somewhere. Bit of moisture testing. Oh, see that? Blow. What are you aiming for? Uh, in blow, well, I know you want to blow 18 ideally, but you really wouldn't want to be going over 20, 22. Um, not really time to go home, then go to the pub. <laughs> and what are these ones now? Uh, these ones are anywhere from low, which is, I think it reads as low as nine. And that's reading up to 16, I can get the odd 16, the rest of it is all 9, 10, 11, 12, so leave the rake, get a few swarts ahead and it'll be bone dry there by the time we get to bend it. It'll oh, be yeah. perfect. Should be A1. I'll just check their two meters. Two meters exactly, I tell you. All good. Nice you to wear the Wexford jersey for the occasion anyway. Yeah, it is, yeah. I'd have to try and bet the river on this, yeah. <laughs> I won't ask you from anyway. No, no, no. I didn't see you wearing yours now, you must be ashamed. Ah, uh, sure, look, I had not room in the luggage mm -hmm. with the jersey, yeah. you know yourself now. Yeah, yeah. What are you at here today anyway? This stuff is kind of like, uh, looks like a bit of a crossbreed between hay and straw. It looks like hay, but they call it um, straw, it's rye grass straw. They, they combine the rye grass, they, they cut the rye grass with like, um, you ever know them, like windrowers, looks like combine header, but it, it just wind rows it into 15 four rows. Yeah. It doesn't put it through a conditioner or anything. And they leave it sit for, I think they leave it for about 10 days. 
and it's drying up, so it's already on the ground 10 days before the combine gets to it. And they'll obviously combine it then. So it's, it's just rye grass without, that has no seed head on it, like. All the seed has been taken off for. Yeah, they're combining it to get the seed, like they're. Yeah, they're, a lot of the seed around the world from grass actually comes from around here. Even you'll see all the seed plants around for cleaning seed, like. And then obviously we went behind the combines then and, and bail it up to use it. I think they just use it for feeding most of the time, but. They call it, it looks like hair, they call it straw. Yeah, I, did, I didn't know that now that grass seed is produced here in New Zealand, or a lot of it is like. And no. I have seen there is a few places around they do, what do they call it, uh, cleaning and dressing yeah, the seed. Yeah, seed clean. There's actually an Irish guy in Medford, um, Rolleston, does um, seed clean and now it's a big, it seemed, I never heard of it now before either, but it's a, it's a very big thing out here. Yeah. It's a very big, because the first day I went bailing, I said you're going bailing straw. And that was grand day, I went into the paddock. I look around and I says, this is not straw, this is a field of hay. No, no, this is straw. I says, that's a funny looking straw on here. <laughs> Are you bailing all season? Uh, I was mowing, well, I kind of do everything. I was mowing mainly until Christmas. I do if the second chopper was out and they were stuck for a drive for the second chopper, if Darby or Dan wasn't around, I'd drive the chopper a bit. And then, say, since Christmas, we the month of January, we were flower bailing silage every day. Every day we were bailing silage, and now well, we're into end of January, start of February now, we're just, there's two balers on straw and one baler on grass now today. Yeah, this, is this, this isn't the brand new baler, no? No, this one, I think it's about a year old, it's just over a year old. Yeah. Has about, I think it has something like 42, um, has something like 42,000 bales on it, if we can get it up. Um, 41,000 bales done in just over, it came Christmas, not the Christmas, gone the Christmas before. Yeah, I think so got, 13 months, would say. Yeah, yes, yeah, the new banner came the exact same as this one came maybe two, three, two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was meant to get it, but he was telling me for months that was my better, and then I came back and Darby had looked up to <laughs> I don't know what happened there now. <laughs> Darby was away with the new banner. He wasn't chancing the old one. Oh, sure, look, you have... I presume this tractor is kind of like the pride of the feet. Well, Pa says the 718 is the pride no, of the feet. No, that 718 is not the pride of the feet. It was crap. <laughs> this, this now, this... This 8 to 8 is definitely the, 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 the finest looking in the fleet anyway. Yeah, she's nice and shiny one. I think she came the same time as the bailer. She's about 1500 hours on her there now. She's uh, she's fairly nice now. You wouldn't complain about sitting in her for the day now. The white pan is 718. <laughs> I've never seen him drive the 718. <laughs> but that's a great job, yeah. Someone else go drive <laughs> And had you done any square bailing before? Uh, only in Texas when we were quite, say, we started chopping wheat. And then we kind of finished around the start of May, maybe second week of May, was it? Kind of the chopping, quieting down, and in between that and the maze, they had he had three square balers that time. He had five now. We were bailing, just bailing wheat straw. Yeah. And I put on the it was a Massey 2270, a class 950, and we bailed away there for maybe five or six weeks. We were just bailing wheat straw every day. So I done, I knew the basics, <laughs> square bailing. Yeah. Obviously yeah. didn't know this baler, but it was it was all pretty much the same. I watched think of these K square balers because I was mad about them, but they're not. Not really that common, are they? Well, no, you wouldn't. There might be a few no islands around home, but not case. But compared to the 2270 XDs now, they wouldn't. The Massey wouldn't all the candles to these. These are just way better. They're even for weights. Like your bale side this there, you can bang out a ton weight in a 1.5 meter bale. Like you can bang out a ton weight, no bother. Inside it, she can she'd bang out 100 bales an hour, like a, yeah. a 1.5 meter bale. Like she's um. A what size bales are you bailing here now today? Four. Well, they're four foot by four foot. No, sorry, four by three, four by three by two meters. I'm not sure what that is in middle now, but they're, I think most of the sheds here are, they have four meter spans. So if you make a, well, if you make kind of, well, they're two point, they're four point two, I think, or something. So if you make a two meter bale or just a one point nine two meter, they can stack two bales wide and all the spans that are calf oh, sheds. Oh, yeah, set. yeah. That's, that's, and they fit on, they seem to work with the, the lengths of the trucks. I watched the story now with the balers. So the two new ones, Four three sixes are kept for hay and straw, is it? Yeah, um, well this one does bail this one was bailing silage there, obviously all season up until up until Christmas and then she kinda went on straw and then if I'd silage the bale I'd take the four three four and yeah. then if I'd straw and then we got rightly busy Kevin started bailing the silage and I came on the straw but like next year they'll probably all be at silage like but but you have to keep it they're kinda keeping it separate at the minute and I'm that I'm bailing all the perennial ryegrass. Darby and Kevin were bailing all the annual. That's just stock contamination. Yeah, they're very strict about contamination. If you were going from, say, from if you bailed a field of cocksfoot now or something, and you were going into any other ryegrass or wheat, you have to go back to the yard and fully eject your chamber and blow her down. 
make sure she spots this or she start to wash her down like yeah, yeah, they're yeah. strict enough about contamination between farms here so you could have to blow down two or three times a day which is not that nice now but I suppose it has to be done oh. we'll be asking Pam Bryce nice to you now keep us in the water all day and the sweat running off you and you're trying to blow down but um, no it's not they're easy enough to go down it's not too bad he's away in the big no hand it's a bit overkill for the rake isn't it good for nothing else now is all that joke is <laughs> good for nothing else Oh, you wouldn't be a fan of the T7? Uh, big, well, 260 horsepower tractor. She's big, dirty manual spools. Uh, she's, the suspension is terrible in her. She's odd. Uh, I wouldn't take her out. She's rotten, you know. Is she hired, is she? Yeah, she does. He hires her in for the season. I don't know why he hires her in now. I get something else now rather than looking at that job. God help the poor man has to drive that now. <laughs> I said, uh, not even a day on it now. Uh, there's no two way in it, it's a good thing. No big and I yet. Besides that, now there's not much advantages to it. We had a case up them out though on the new bear on them, she was a lovely tractor now. She yeah, what's thinking of that? She, she was nearly smooth on the road in the A28 now. Yeah? She was now, to be fair now. I didn't think she was going to be kill me to say it now. But yeah, she, yeah, she was yeah. comfy, she was very comfy on the road. Yeah. She was lovely now. I don't think this will be the fence though, but she was she, she was nice now. A lot cheaper too. 70 grand or something, was it? Or? 70 or 100 or something. Something like that, yeah. Money. I'll not be paying for it, so I'll not worry too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you're happy enough with the fence anyway. Ah, oh, unreal. She's lovely now. <laughs> She's lovely. Yeah, sure, look, we'll leave it at that, so. That's the job. I'll leave you bail away. Yeah, get something done here now today. <laughs> are we having a workshop Monday? No, no, no. We are, yeah. What's up with that? Just the old expansion I cracked? Yeah, the fifth and sear cracked on it. This one here. Just blew out coolant. Yeah, sprained up onto the bottom. Is this the baler that he stole off you? He did. He stole me baler. The new baler that you were supposed to get. Yeah, but she did nothing. The tractor's ah. liable to go and take it all. Same That's some Galway lads for you now. Oh. Snakes! <laughs> Never seen a square baler before. <laughs> Don't pretend. But they brought the look like. Huh? And then broke the tractor. And broke the tractor. <laughs> after, after I paid up. The I thought fence didn't break down. That's fence problem. That's <laughs> I had to go down dice in. It's dice is the problem, yeah, not fence. Yeah. <laughs> That's shocking. Uh, we're starting another one. Is that the A frame you painted? Oh, Arts and Crafts, I'll leave that one. Ah, look. It's a professional job. <laughs> That's custom now. You must, to, must have run out of sandpaper that day. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason it's on my banner. There won't be no credit. Yeah. You hear if it's fish in the air. <laughs> the pressure's getting to him. Liquid metal might fix it, would it? Yeah. Liquid metal. Two for two. Here we get one in it. Look good for the camera. Tell. <laughs> Just stone to the holes with that. Oh. Man, Steve? No. <laughs> Whoa. Happy enough? Now we're off. Because you know, I got like an 8 or 900 series for the day, like when you knew I was coming. What would you want to do? these sevens are too small, like I'm a no, big man, like. They are, but I'm any small. Like. <laughs> There's no need to do anything big yokes at all. The mother lads should take only go to the big farms, like. Oh, is that the way? Oh, yeah. You'll be doing all the tidy jobs, like. I get all the ones they can go. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. That's what you'll be out later tonight, is it? Sure, I'll you'll do all the work. You'll do all the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and be in the pub there at 8 o'clock in the evening. Oh, I'd say you're all guilty of that now. You're, from what I've seen anyway, you're in, oh. in in the morning there kicking stones around the workshop and talking about moisture and going out looking at paddocks and lunchtime then you might do a bit and you're still in the pub every evening. We're home for the dinner, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure you'd be there with us though. <laughs> I know you get away with it, lad. Yes. Do you work for Dearman at home, do you? I do, yeah. And would he be bossing around over here now? No, oh, no, he knows. He knows better. <laughs> he knows nothing. Watching the whole crack in here. Is this your first time in New Zealand? This is my first time, yeah. I came out there at the end of September, I'm sure. We're still here anyway, so that's a good sign, I suppose. Mm. We'll be back again next year, do you reckon? Yeah, sure, we'll see how, how it ends up. Yeah, is, yeah, uh, yeah. It's a great experience anyway, to come out and see it. Yeah. yeah he liked it. And are you on this baler most of the season, like? I was on this baler since the middle of January. Morning from September until the middle of January. You were you were the lucky man that got to well you and Pa were trying out the new John Deere demo baler. Oh we were we got to go on it. Uh, what do you think of it? Ah, it's fine. You walk well to take the grass and there's no bother with it that way. For the steer next now it's a pretty good job. Oh yeah yeah. And to drag around the corners a bit alright. Uh, good baler now to take the grass and everything. What do you think of the 
the set up now Pat has with the Finn Baylor and then trailing the rapper behind it. And um, sure, very good individually. Yeah, yeah. Together, it's hard to beat fusion, like, isn't it? Yeah, oh, sure, I knew you'd say that, like, you're just a fusion man to the backbone, like, that's it. That's it, that's <laughs> not wrong, am I? I didn't even mention a fusion, and you had to come <laughs> out with it. Ah, uh, even the transport time and anything like that, sure. Yeah, look, now, to be fair, that, that like, a fusion would definitely be faster than that John Deere Baylor. Oh, it would, yeah. But um, sure, look, no matter what, like, you're just, you're McHale to the backbone, because that's your parish, and you actually work for McHale, didn't I you? I did, yeah, for a while. And what were you at there? Um, mechanic in was for two summers and we should hit in the store as well small bit of demo driving I'm watching this square baler crack now must be a gift there just to sail away for the day and grand not and worry about anything grand and good crops it has to be dry cannot bale with green grass with it like don't like that uh, you'd be up and down every five minutes the knotters pulling twine through it and pulling grass out of them but, oh you just just getting hard to play like. yeah if you get into the straw or hay You'll sail away there most of the day, you'll never have to get down. But they do square bale a lot of silage out here, like. Oh, sure. Something you I'd wouldn't say, see at home, like, but. I'd say for every eight bales of silage, or maybe even nine pan makes, you'll only make one round one. Yeah, yeah. The majority yeah. of it is square bales. Yeah. Are you sick of the moan? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, I never want to see a moor out here again. <laughs> That's just tough enough country now to go mowing really with stones. They weren't cute out here like you lads in the west, they didn't go building the stone walls. No. They tried to push the stones down instead of building walls with them. The midnight you eat the right walls, idea, over that way. Give them all up. <laughs> That's grand too to come over to and have a crew mostly of Irish lads like when the wet days do come and you do end up and then the Dublin are there with them. And it's nice to have there. an Irish pub in the, in the place as well. Oh, like. it is, yeah. We're well, you know? we're well minded that way. So even if you're in Tashburton, you go into Kelly's like. You'd never be stuck for a pub, innit? Yeah. No, no, no. Ah, it's a nice place, mate, for now, like this. It is, yeah, uh, sure. It is really nice, like. Sure, we've the uh, Ireland flags up there on the back of the bailers and stuff, they're up in the harvesters and that as well. Yeah. Sure, I'd say they're well used Irish around, mate. Oh, they are, like, yeah. Sure. You pull into a place there and they're all over asking, oh, you, what part of Ireland are you from? And yeah, you're not yeah. here, and what do you make of it? Ireland's a lovely place, isn't it? <laughs> not so different from here, I yeah. suppose, like. How many bales now are you getting to the hectare of this stuff? Uh, sure, there's 335 bales there nearly. Sure, between the two fields, there are 15 hectares. I think it was 15, the first yeah. field, was there? Was there, uh, I don't know, it's here then. It's probably 8 or 10 here again. Oh, yeah. So, 25 hectares, there'll be. There'll be 450 bales, anyway. They're That's coming out live, anyway, I don't know how much, there's one every like 40 seconds. There is, they're coming fairly fast. Grand square bailers, no stopping ones. You stay at constant pace moving along the whole time. You don't get seasick from the old. I don't really know, so I'm <laughs> used to it now. Yeah, I suppose. Would you know, so you would. In this seat, you would like, sure, oh, it's pure, there's no yeah. giving it, like, you know. You kind of you set the speed forward speed so you wouldn't feel the plunge as much. Yeah, yeah. If you're going too fast, you're blocking, and if you're going too slow, you'll feel the rocking. Yeah, yeah. So you have to get a happy medium. Yeah, sure, look, we'll leave it at that, so Kevin. I might go find the airman and I'll tell him your tell no lies about him. Da. <laughs> all, all the truth from him. Uh. Right, sound. Yeah. How's the old bailing going for you? Not great. No? Not great when there's rain coming. <laughs> What's your break? Uh, that was slip clutch. Could give you nothing. You have that. There's the ground out here, you can't tramp it. <laughs> but not like this at home. You're used to the bog. Used to the bog. <laughs> Stone sink in the bog. They sit here. <laughs> when you're not breaking bailers, uh, what are you doing? Nothing much, really. Keep JJ's going. <laughs> Likely to be spotted on a wagon as well, like. Yeah, Is this your first day on the bailer? First day on the bailer, yeah. Ah, stop. And you broke it. Sure, someone has to do it. <laughs> These bailers are here to be tested, <laughs> not looked at. Oh, she's no Mikhail. No. <laughs> Mikhail's is the only way to go now. <laughs> Try to convince him now next year. Well, are you feel guilty? Guilty for what? Steal the new bailer. I didn't steal it at all. It's not what I heard. So you open the yard to take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard there was a big fall now, didn't I? Uh, 
<laughs> no fun, no dog. I just <laughs> dropped it. it over now, will he? That's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cash is all the same. So you're contracting at home? Yeah. And you're all kind of John Deere's and. John Deere, yeah, mostly John Deere with uh, class as well and Trinity Islands was the rest yeah. of the John Deere's. And you're so. big into turf? Yeah. yeah, love it. Are you after getting kind of hit now with the, what, what would you call it at home, the kind of ban on turf, is there? Or? Oh yeah, it's ban on the, not such turf, but peat, like. Yeah, it's good. The peat for the horticulture. Yeah, commercial peat is banned, is it? Yeah, yeah. Still cut turf for households. Yeah, you can is still that? cut turf for domestic. Yeah, also, yeah, yeah. everyone who has their bank in that. So you do, still do a bit of that, like? Yeah, yeah. We had that for a bit of the spring there. Does that just um, fill the gaps in the silage and slurry and whatever, like? Yeah, yeah kind yeah, of, so. yeah. You're uh, busy all your own, like? Yeah, mostly. We're, we are busy when we the when we the piece for the parts culture. Yeah. We're kind of busy all your own with that, but since that's gone now, we're quite doing thing. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Find some let's find fill the gap. Well, what are you doing? Silage, slurry, silage, you do cultivation? slurry, dung, no, no cultivation. Oh, yeah. Just uh, cut turf as well. And what have you at the turf? Self felt machine? Yeah, three self felt hoppers. What three of them? Yeah, and two diggers. Alright. One digger feeding two of them and one then feeding one of them as well. Alright, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have to cut down for a look at this turf crack. You will. Uh, I don't know much about it now, but it sounds interesting, yeah. That's just great. Sounds crack. like there's plenty of heart you bat it and rooting and tearing and dragging and Ah it's middle. Ah, it's grand. You can stop when you want and have the tear tin and tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd have cooked away ourselves in the bog, so it's grand. <laughs> Fry the morning and without dinner and evening. Wouldn't be the same pressure as silage like. Oh no, no, no. It's like uh Start at seven in the morning and you finish at eight at night. Yeah, yeah. They're your hours, like. Um, All turf out here for you anyway? No, I'm finding a bit of bog now, so. Uh, you didn't come across any yet, no? No. I'd say up to North Island, maybe. I'd say so, yeah. I've never up there now. Yeah, same. But from what I hear now, there's nothing but hills and rain and misery up there, isn't it? Yeah, more peasier. And maize, loads of maize. land. What do you think of the whole, um, the bell balers and the tube rack, wrapping and all that crack out here? Ah, sure, it's grand out here, like, you've lots of room. Yeah, yeah, like, you, you do a lot of bales at home, do you? Yeah, with two fusions at home. The two wrappers wouldn't suit at home now. No? No, no. Would they not, would, would they not suit there to be lighting them up and getting the stone walls in Galway there? Ah, uh, doubt no. <laughs> <laughs> no. And you're in the air and concrete. No mess I with the winter. I yeah, suppose, yeah. yeah. Sure, look, I don't know, it's just something that they have out here and... Yeah, it works well for them. Yeah. They're winter feeding the whole time, so they've not sheds as such. And what's the story with the stuff you were changing earlier on there, the hay thing? That's like an acid, is it, or...? Yeah, kind of like, um... What do they call it? Oculent, is it, or...? Inoculant, yeah. yeah. Just means you can bail at a bit of higher moisture. Yeah, yeah. It'll kind of save it, if you know what I mean. It stops the heating, is it? It does, yeah. It stops from going on fire. Oh, that'll help, yeah. That'll help, right. <laughs> Especially when they're stacked up in a shed. Yeah, it just means you can go up another few percent. Instead of stopping at 15, like you go up to 20 or 22 or... And you're putting that on all the time, like? No, no, you only put it on when the bales are um, a bit damp. And the, oh, right, and the yeah, stuff yeah. is a bit damp. Like if you're 15 or below, you don't need to put it on at all. And Jenny has to know, like, so far, do we never use spare baler before with knotters or anything or...? No, just one of them alright was, you kept stepping through the knot. Yeah. It's just a matter of uh, tightening the boat above the knotters and it gets rid of the, the it shortens up the tail on the knot. And that fix then and stop pulling through. Right, should we leave it at that? I'll leave you at it. Sound job. Too many days in the darkness without a glimpse of the light. Running tired and broken and scared, but I swear I'll never give up the fight. I see you broken and beat. Down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender Darling, you were meant to survive With every star We are born again Open your heart Spend less time in your head With every
Just like a seed in a garden You will grow to be tall Staring